Today in Ham Radio Q&A, something a little controversial and also a bit misunderstood. May I transmit without a license in an emergency? Please keep watching for more on this important topic. KB9 VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons receive access to exclusive content, and our patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over on patreon.com slash KB9 VBR Antennas. In the comments of my videos, I receive comments like this all the time. No license needed in a life or death frequent emergency on any frequency? My question is an emergency, and I say I need help. I hit the button and ask for it. Are they going to throw my rear end in jail if I don't have a license? Can I use a ham radio frequency without a license legally in a declared state of emergency scenario? It's a simple question. I know the people asking the questions are concerned about the state of society, and many of them think we are on the brink of something. They also hear comments about how in the event of an emergency, you can use any means necessary to summon help. So we are going to talk a bit about what is an emergency, what the FCC rules say, and if transmitting without a license is the proper thing to do. First off, what is an emergency? We talk a lot about emergency communications and certainly emergency communications are an integral part of the amateur radio service. Both the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service and the ARRL's Amateur Radio Emergency Service provide organized communication services for local and state emergency management when disaster strikes. Since ARIES and RACES members operate on behest of emergency management, they will define what an emergency is and we will operate within that scope. But on the individual level, I think there is a general misconception of what con constitutes an emergency and how to communicate during one. So let's take a look at the rules. In the maritime and aircraft radio services, the FCC clearly defines emergencies and stations in distress and how, to and how those communications will be handled. But we won't be talking about airplanes and ships at sea today. Instead, we're going to look at the rules outlined in the amateur radio service as there are specific rules that apply to amateur and non-amateur radio operators. In the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 47, Telecommunications, Chapter 1, Federal Communications Commission's Special Radio Services, Part 97, the Amateur Radio Service, Subpart E, Providing Emergency Communications, outline the rules for emergency communications. 97.403, Safety of Life and Protection of Property says, no provision of these rules prevents the use by an amateur station of any means of radio communications at its disposal to provide essential communications needs in connection with the immediate safety of human life and immediate protection of property when normal communication systems are not available. Let's break that down. The rule allows for licensed amateur radio operators to provide essential communications in connection with the immediate safety of human life or personal property. This could be from a licensed or unlicensed operator, but the FCC assumes that the receiver of these communications is licensed as they say amateur station in the rule. For example, if an amateur radio operator receives a distress call via amateur radio frequencies from an unlicensed individual, they are allowed to communicate and provide essential services to that individual. This is assuming that normal communication systems, such as cell phones, are not available to the individual. In normal circumstances, licensed amateurs are not to intentionally communicate with non-licensed individuals on amateur frequencies. This rule allows a provision for when that can be possible. Moving on to part 97.405, station in distress, it says in paragraph A, no provision of these rules prevents the use by an amateur station in distress of any means at its disposal to attract attention, make known its condition and location, and obtain assistance. 
paragraph B. No provision of these rules prevents the use by a station in the exceptional circumstances described in paragraph A of this section of any means of radio communications at its disposal to assist a station in distress. This provision is a little more encompassing. Paragraph A allows for amateur radio operators to use their station in any means possible to make their location available and obtain assistance. A loose reading of this rule could mean that licensed amateurs could establish a contact on an unauthorized channel outside the amateur radio service to obtain assistance while in distress. Paragraph B is the corollary. It doesn't prevent a station, and note it doesn't say amateur station, but just station, any means of radio communications at its disposal to assist a station in distress. Since paragraph B doesn't specify amateur station, there is a narrow allowance for non-amateur radio services to render aid to the station in distress. These rules are pretty clear. First, anyone licensed or not may use an amateur radio station pro to provide essential communications for the immediate safety of human life and immediate protection of property when normal communications are not available. And second, any station, amateur or not, may render aid to that station in distress. Two key words found here, immediate, and when normal communication systems are not available. Immediate would mean in the moment or when taking the time to establish communications via conventional means would mean the loss of life or property. There needs to be a sense of urgency for an unlicensed person to use amateur equipment to communicate on amateur channels. This brings us to the second point, when normal communication systems are not allowed. For an unlicensed person to pick up a radio and to make a distress call on the amateur bands, there is a reasonable expectation that no other method of communications is available, such as your cell phone or is either inoperable or service is not available. Is it a flat tire or a disabled car on the side of the road? Most likely not. It needs to be a significant event where life and property is in danger and no other legitimate means of communications is available, such as dialing 911 on your cell phone. What if I see a house fire? Can I use my radio to contact the uh, local fire department? In that case, you would need to ask yourself two questions. First, are you a firefighter authorized to use that public safety channel? And two, are you able to call 911 instead? If 911 is available, you need to use that. If you were to get on a public safety radio system and ask for help, you will most likely have to contend with legal consequences of some sort. So you will need to ask yourself if the consequences justify the action you are taking. I don't mean to sound harsh, but transmitting without a license on the amateur bands or, uh, or, authorization, uh, or without authorization on a public safety channel is a serious matter. And many people think that calling something that may be an inconvenience is an emergency, is a way to circumvent getting a license. The license holders are responsible for the content that goes on over the air. If you use a public safety channel that you are not authorized to, the agency could bring criminal charges. If you use an amateur station in an unlicensed manner, the FCC may bring civil pen penalties. Finally, I hear people saying that, well, they can use any frequency when there is a state of emergency or breakdown of civil society in the in that first instance, no, you can't. A state of emergency is a designation for disaster or civil relief and offers no special dispensation on using the airwaves. A jurisdictional state of emergency does not suspend any FCC rule, and in fact, the opposite may happen. For example, during a hurricane, certain frequencies may be guarded for hurricane watch operations. As for the breakdown of civil society, I'm not going to hold my breath on that, on a Mad Max scenario coming anytime soon. So what is my recommendations? Well, get your amateur radio license. Learn to use the radios 
and train for emergencies or natural disasters. Having your license and using your radio in a responsible manner will better train you with its operation in the event you are in a distress situation. If you feel that carrying a radio is a good backup while out in the wilderness or backcountry, then by all means do so. I take mine in addition to a phone when out in the woods. But don't expect a magical get out of jail free card in the, in the event that your situation doesn't rise to the level of emergency in the eyes of the authorities. To recap, here are some key takeaways from this discussion. Are amateur station control operators ever permitted to operate outside the frequency privileges of their license class? Yes, but only if necessary in situations involving the immediate safety of human life or protection of property. Can a non-licensed individual transmit on the amateur radio bands? Yes, but only in the necessary in situations involving the immediate safety of human life and the immediate protection of property when normal communication systems are not available. Can an amateur station speak to an unlicensed individual on the amateur bands? Yes, but only to provide essential communications needs in connection with the immediate safety of human life and the immediate protection of property when normal communication systems are not available. Do you have any questions or comments on what constitutes an emergency? Well, please leave them in the comments below. I'll filter through them, and who knows, you may end up on our next Your Questions Answered live stream. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Your support of this channel drives the production of future videos. Support us on Patreon to help keep the mission alive. Give us uh, that thumbs up if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when a future video is released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.